So enough about me. Let me provide some value here based on the horrible, horrible things that I've heard in the last few days, what people taught you. And I'm going to just make, make it in the form of my top 10 Bingo. tips. My top 10 <laughs> tips, right? So first of all, top 10 tips for blogging and podcasting. Number one, okay, do your homework, guys, and start right, okay? Learn from the best. If you learn from mediocrity, the only thing you're going to replicate is more mediocrity. You have to find the people in the best, the best people in your field. Don't listen to me. Each one of you is interested in a different field, different than mine. Find the best people in your field. Success leaves traces. Model them, imitate them, emulate them, contact them, read their books, ask them for help. Those people are always very generous and willing to help. Right? The breadcrumbs are there to be found if you're looking for them. Number two, and that's the first thing that made me boil yesterday, and, and yeah. I almost lost it, okay? If you start an online venture like a blog or a podcast, for God's sake, people, don't ever put it on a place like Podbean or LinkedIn or something like this, okay? Don't ever do that. First of all, they control you. They can shut you down for whatever stupid excuse anytime they want. We want to work with the risk that any day they feel like for whatever stupid and unclear violation of their, you know, uh, rules and regulations, they can shut you down. I mean, my brother-in-law's wife had a circus blog on Blogger. One day they decide, no, it doesn't fit. We take it down. We had to, Tony had to struggle for a month to get back the content, right? So, and there's other problems, right? When you have your own domain, so, Please, guys, don't do that. Please find, buy your own domain. It's actually cheaper. There's places where you can buy it for five bucks, right? Podbean and the other places start you at daddy. 20 bucks, right? Not so daddy. The other guys start you at, at 20 bucks. You can start for five bucks and have your own domain. And that what, what that means is also you're building equity. Equity. You're not working for a third party, okay? You're building equity. One guy wanted to buy my blog now, and of course I'm not willing to sell, and first the price wasn't even close. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm building equity, right? You, do you want to be rewarded for your labor and for what you do and for what you're passionate about, or do you want to be a slave and, and be controlled by a third party that can shut you down anytime? Okay? So, when somebody's making that mistake after six years of podcasting, that's a tragedy. Because that guy was a pioneer. He started three years before me to podcast. And he's a great guy. And he's very passionate, if you know the session I'm referring to, right? It's a tragedy that he's still there. <clears throat> but it's a crime if he's telling you to do it, OK? Because if you follow him, you, you would end up like him. He's happy if you get four books for free that nobody's ever heard about and never read. And he's like, yeah. And that's a tragedy for me, because he deserves better. Number three, start an email list as soon as possible. Email list is the most important asset. His thing was like, well, I have my backup disk with my podcast. You know, if they shut me down, I can put it up. Sure, but people don't know where to look for you, man. They've been coming for six years to your Podbean or whatever links in uh, domain, and now they don't know that you're in the other end of the world. They're never going to find you. Right? So have your own email list to be able, and, and if, if my blog goes down tomorrow, I know, and I don't have many, but I have loyal readers, loyal readers. I have only about 900. And by the way, there's a fantastic article written by Kevin Kelly, who's the chief maverick and founder of uh, Wired Magazine, and he wrote an article called 1,000 True Fans or Loyal Readers. And his argument is, if you can do that, you can make a hundred grand a year if you're an artist, a small business man, and you'll be set. Because you have a community, you have a tribe which is willing to go to, for, to a fight for you. Right, so that's the power. So if everything goes down tomorrow, I know with one email I can get 900 kids in one day on my new blog post somewhere else. And that's not much, but it's a damn good start. And those people would spread it, those people would bookmark it, and those people would tell other people. And this is how you build a community. So please, as soon as you buy your own domain, start up an email list. Please, please, be your own master. Don't be a slave to somebody else. Please, I beg you. So, number four, go, go for quality, not for quantity, right? 
And that pertains at two levels. First of all, the articles that you write. Don't listen to people who tell you, oh, you have to post every day. How often you post is important, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is how good are your posts. If your content sucks, nobody's going to give a damn about it anyway. So make sure that it's worth, if it's not worth your friend's time, and if your mom has a hard time reading it, or your best friend is not really even interested in reading it, how are you going to make other people who have never met you across the world read it? Right? So go for quality, and the same for subscribers. When people walk out the room, I'm thankful to them, because I don't want to waste your time. When people unsubscribe from my email list, I'm happy, because I know the people who stay there care. I don't want to deal with people who don't care. I don't, want, I don't have time to deal with people who don't want to listen. So they can leave. That's their choice. I appreciate it. I don't want to waste your time either. So go for quality and the relationships. Number five, these guys, and that's the other thing that really upset me yesterday on the, at the SEO session. Don't write for search engines, for Christ's sake. Write for people, right? Search engines, and especially Google is working right now on killing all those SEO optimizers. And they're not there yet, right? It's an arms rest race. But eventually, they're going to get there. They are. And or if I were a betting person, I would put my money on Google, okay? And the smarter the algorithms become, the more they cater to people. Not to HTML code, not to stuffing uh, your article with keywords and to all the other crap and, and creating fake links from link farms that nobody's ever heard of. So, do your basics. Search engine optimization is important, right? So, tag your, your pictures. Uh, make good headlines, full of key, keywords, but just the basics. Write for people. It's the people who make you succeed or fail. It's not a stupid search engine, okay? So when somebody says, oh, I got this search engine SEO sandwich, right? You put it to Flickr, you put it there, then you make this sandwich, and then you feed that sandwich to the, to the robot that comes to, 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 to scan your, your blog. You know, that's a, a lot of, you know, like, do you want to, do you have robots to read your stuff or do you care about people, right? If you care about people like me, you should cater to people. Number six, please be authentic, okay? But not authentic like the people in the authenticity session yesterday. <laughs> okay, and I'll tell you why. First of all, all those people work for companies, right? So right there, there's a huge conflict of interest. Second of all, don't tell me, oh man, if a company, and I can't believe people do that. If a company gives me free stuff, even if my hair falls off, I'm going to say it's the best. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, are you serious? Are you serious? Are you, are you completely oblivious to the fact that the internet never forgets, ever? You can do that only once, once. And then for the rest of your life, people would Google you and you, they would see you are the guy who made other people's hair fall off, right? Do you want to do that to yourself? I mean, honestly. Or, or don't be like that other girl who telling me that I don't understand uh, uh, social media because, it, you know, honestly, nothing has changed. She has a degree in public relations and, you know, used to be written, now it's just not written in digital, but everything else is the same. And... Um, She's a blogger, but she doesn't write negative reviews. She only publishes positive reviews, and she's authentic. How can you be authentic if you don't write negative reviews, okay? First of all, I don't usually write reviews, and I only write about stuff that I use. But if I decide to do something, here's my commitment, okay? And this is where authenticity and honesty comes to play. You take on writing a review, okay? You don't know if it's a good review or a bad review. You write a review. And once you begin that process, your obligation is to complete it. If it's a good review or a bad review, you have to finish it. You must write what you found for yourself. And if you're writing a bad review, don't feel guilty about it. You're still providing a public service to somebody who is considering that product, who has a similar problem like you do, and who could benefit, save their time, money, and effort, and may be grateful that you warned them about it. So. If you're telling me, I don't publish negative reviews and stuff like that, you're not authentic for me right there, okay? Because none of us is perfect. Everyone screws up. And when you screw up, by the way, you have to own, own up to it. Like, I recently, by the way, 
that a total, well, perhaps one of my biggest screw ups ever in, on Christmas Eve. And I literally ruined uh, Christmas Eve for my whole family, right? Literally. And it was one of the most ghastly experience, most shameful things I've ever done in my life. But, and it took me only minutes to realize it. And that was even more painful. And I had to, to own up to it. And the damage is done, and it's going to take years to be repaired, right? But I'm willing to stand up to it and first acknowledge it. I, I totally messed up, and I'm really sorry. And I'm going to, and it's going to take time, but, it's going to, but I'm going to work to improve it and to fix it eventually in the long run. So when you screw up, don't, don't tell me, like, I'm an honest and authentic blogger, um, but I don't write this, and I don't write that simply because it doesn't look good. You know what? Nobody's perfect. You including me, including the product included. So write the good with the bad if you want to claim to be honest and authentic. Um, num uh, number seven. Okay, I'm running out of time. Number seven. Give first, give often, and give a lot without asking or expecting something back. Don't be like that guy. Oh, call the best people in your industry and tell them, Here's my interview, here's my podcast, here's my article, it's really good. You know what? The truth is nobody cares about your article, your blog, and your podcast, okay? They care about themselves and their problems. So instead of asking them to help you, go and help them first. Go and see what they need and do it. And don't expect or ask for anything in return. And eventually things are going to start paying back in the long term. Don't market yourself or your product. Don't say, well, my market is the best, my product is the best, I'm the best, and stuff like that, because probably you're not. But more importantly, find a cause to campaign. So campaign instead of uh, market yourself and your product. Campaign. Figure out the cause. Say if you, if you have a, a product for weight loss, right? Start a campaign against obesity or against heart disease and say okay there's a bunch of products there mine is one of the good products there it's certainly not the only product on the market and but i believe it's, it's one of the best products out there but start a campaign and make a difference and people would appreciate your work and your product and would reward you for it number nine you know what i told you before it's not easy it's not comfortable it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of being uncomfortable and a lot of stretching the limits your limits but there are no shortcuts. You can't do it, you know, it takes 20 years to have an overnight success. It took me two and a half years to make it to NASA, and I'm still struggling, by the way, even though I have people sending me $2,000 for video cameras and for this and for that, I still haven't quite figured it out yet. And that's why I don't consider myself to be a successful blogger. But when somebody walks in the room and says, well, this person has been, this minx, she's been the oldest, blogger in Toronto and she gets 6,200, <coughs> sometimes 6,200 kids per day. Are you kidding me? You know, that's that's really not that much. Honestly, honestly, that's really not that much. So, so, so that's why I said, well, I had to step up to the plate and, and, and tell people, you know, what's possible there. So do the work, number nine. Number ten, never give up. Never give up. I'll give you an example. That guy, Dan Barry, that I met this summer, he's this astronaut who had for a while the longest spacewalk record. He applied 13 times for NASA. 13 times he was turned down, okay? The first time he applied, he was 23. You know, when you're 23 and somebody says no, it's one thing. When you're 35 and somebody says no after 12 no's, it's a different story. It takes real guts and real commitment and real belief in your dream and in what you can do and really putting yourself out there on the line to pursue your dreams and to never ever ever give up so those are some of the myths and, and mistakes that i wanted to to dispel um for you from the talks that i attended yesterday and which kind of hijacked the topic of my conversation today um which was originally supposed to be uh, on the topic of the technological singularity.